Daily Minutes of Sunday, August 23rd, 2015. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. Our show is completely in English today. We have several news items for you. And now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. Two CubeSats built in Denmark, GOM X3 and AAU Sat 5, are on their way to the International Space Station. Japan's fifth HII transfer vehicle, or HTV, blasted off from Tanegashima Space Center on Wednesday, August 19th at 11:50 UTC. The HTV-5 is expected to arrive at the ISS on August 24th. The plan is to have the Danish astronaut Andreas Morgensen, KG-5GCZ, deploy the CubeSats when he arrives on the ISS in September. The CubeSats will last about six to nine months before re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. The 3U CubeSat GOM-X3 is part of the outreach program for the visit of the Danish astronaut Andreas to the ISS. The project is supported and coordinated with ESA and the Danish Ministry of Science and Education. The IARU coordinated frequency is 437.250 MHz for the 1K2 through 9K6 BPS beacon. AAU Sat 5 is a 1U cube sat built by students at Alberg University. The primary mission is to test an improved receiver for detecting automatic identification system signals emitted by ships down on the Earth. These signals are short range, operating mainly on a ship to shore and ship to ship basis, leaving large spans of the world's oceans uncovered. But signals also travel up to orbital altitude, opening up the prospect of worldwide monitoring. The IARU coordinated frequency is 437.425 MHz for the GMSK beacon. Thanks to AMSAT UK for this week's story. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. A Virginia Tech undergraduate researcher and radio amateur, Carson Squibb, KM4MBQ, used Super Dual Auroral Radar Network and Amateur Radio Reverse Beacon Network data to study how solar flares impact HF radio propagation over the entire day side of the Earth. Squibb's research determined that lower frequencies experience fades in propagation prior to a flare peak, with recovery taking longer, while the degree of loss is more severe as frequency decreases. Rumors are still circulating about a possible de-expedition to the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, the most wanted and elusive DXCC entity on the planet. The latest to announce plans for a North Korean operation are Antonio Gonzalez, EA-5RM, and Manuel German, EA-7AJR, both de-expedition veterans. On their fourth trip to North Korea since 2013, Gonzalez and German met on August 17th with what they described as, quote, high-level officials, close quote, in North Korea's telecommunications ministry. In an August 17th news release, Gonzalez and German said that the officials in Pyongyang, North Korea's capital, were, quote, very kind, receptive, and cooperative, close quote. Gonzalez and German are not alone in attempting to be next to activate North Korea. Earlier this year, Polish amateur Dom Grizb, 3Z9DX, announced that he had secured written permission to operate from North Korea in January or February 2016. He is supposed to go to Pyongyang for a final meeting to discuss guidelines for the operation. Paul Ewing, N6PSE, and David Flack, AH6HY of the Intrepid DX Group, have visited North Korea several times since announcing intentions in 2013 to operate from there for two weeks. However, in an August 10th blog post, Ewing seemed pessimistic that anyone would be allowed to operate from the secretive communist enclave anytime soon. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at arrl.org. Daily Minutes is daily at 1700 UTC on 6.005 and 73.10 kHz and 5 minutes later on the PI2 NOS repeater system. Next day there are reruns, 800 UTC on 73.10 kHz, 830 UTC on PI2 NOS and 1230 UTC on 95.60 kHz.